Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. For once, we're actually in the greenhouse. There's a little bit of daylight, but it's still quite gloomy. This time of year, the sun really struck. I'm next to a hill, basically. That's where the greenhouse is located in the back garden of my property. And uh, we've got a very large hill, or in England, we call that a down. I don't know if that's uh, irony. We call it a down. It's not it's definitely an up, really. Uh, but so there's a down anyway. The sun struggles to get above it, so it does stay it's almost perpetually dark in winter here. And um, so, yeah, but we've got a bit of light today. The clouds are sort of intermittent, so I thought I'd uh, do a bit of a catch up. I hope you've all really enjoyed the experiment I've been doing on the efficacy of pyrethrum and neem oil. It's, um, it's been quite a, it's taken a lot of time to prepare this video. Uh, it's taken a lot of time to film it and edit it because it's just so long. I just excuse the, new, the noise, the heaters on making a lot of noise. So some of you remember, we took two jam jars full of the aphid infected flower spikes from those Drosera capensis. And so I sealed them up and into one, I, uh, I into both of them I placed the, the, the flower stalks with the aphids in situ and we sprayed them. We sprayed one with neem and we sprayed one with pyrethrum uh, to see basically what happened, which one was the more effective, uh, which one took the least amount of time to kill everything. And um, it's been 24 hours now. So I said I'd have to do regular updates because I expected these products to work relatively well not well at least one of these two to work quite quickly and um, the results even surprised me um, especially the pyrethrin which would appear to be like basically like napalm for aphids because um, that would appear to be very 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 strong stuff um, so whilst we've got a little bit of light in here, what I'll do is I'll move you guys. I'll get the jam jars over here near where the scaphosepalums normally sit. And uh, we'll have a little look and a discuss about what's going on in there. Okay, so in front of us, we have the two bottles, which we, well, the two jam jars, which I've treated. The one on the left being the pyrethrum. And the one on the right with the slightly hazy appearance is the one that we treated with neem. Now, a lot of this haze is caused by the oily residue of the neem oil uh, being on the inside of the glass of the jam jar. Uh, whereas the pyrethrum, uh, it seems to be less of a viscous fluid, so it, it doesn't sort of coat the glass in the same way. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom you guys out so you can get my ugly mug. Uh, in shot like this. Hopefully, I'm going to remain in shot. Okay. Ah, oh, move some stuff out of the way. Okay. So the pyreth. No, we'll do the neem oil first. Okay. So it's been 24 hours since I sprayed the flower stalks in this jam jar with neem, and almost instantaneously after spraying, uh, I noticed that some of the aphids, which have been sort of blown off by the impact. Of the, um, of, of the spray um, were sort of like stuck to the outside of the glass. Uh, they were very agitated. Those that remained were sort of wandering around on top. Of, none, none of them were feeding. They'd all stopped feeding almost instantaneously. And they were all just walking around uh, on the actual flower stalks in there and not actually doing anything. Since them activities really, really slowed down, I wish I could show you this in greater detail. So the ones that got blown off, I'm assuming they were the ones that were instantly coated in the neem oil. They died after about an hour and a half to two hours because that was the time after which I next checked it. So they died pretty quickly. I'm assuming, uh, as I um, discussed in, in the original video, they get sort of coated with the neem oil and it blocks the air holes in their bodies up and they, they simply suffocate. So it took about an hour, hour and a half for those guys to die. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take, have a quick look inside. Now straight away there is an aphid on the lid of the, uh, oh, I might be able to show you actually. See that green speck just at the top near my finger up here? That is an aphid and that fella is still alive. It's definitely still alive, although it is looking very dopey, um, but it's still alive, it's not dead, okay? If I have a quick look at some of the flower spikes which are left, this flower spike has no aphids on it at all, nothing, diddly squat, so they're not feeding. This flower spike, which has got some of the uh, seed pods or the old dead flowers, has no live oh hang on there's an aphid here this here has some aphids on it but they're only nymph aphids so they're very 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 small indeed i mean hardly noticeable really 
and I'm just have a quick look inside at the rest. I can see quite a few that have been knocked off. They're sort of lying on the bottom of the jam jar and they are definitely dead. I'm going to hook this next piece out here. Just lay that down. I'll pop these other bits back in like that. So here's another bit of flower spike. And this has got some aphids on it. Only nymph aphids, some of which are definitely dead. So there's definitely some dead ones on here. There's a few very small uh, aphids. No, they're dead as well. Basically, everything on this flower spike is also dead. So I'd say, I don't know how many aphids, if we'd have been hyper um, accurate, I'd have counted the amount of aphids before I put them in there. Um, but out of a good number of aphids, I found two which are alive. Uh, and they're not feeding, they're sort of just like wandering around basically. So I'm not sure whether they, the, the, the um, active ingredient is basically put them off feeding. Uh, to, I need to clear off in the greenhouse. Uh, and they're just not actively feeding, procreating, whatever you'd expect normal aphid activity to be. So um, although it's not an instant killer, it's killed quite a few. There are some remaining. What I would be inclined to do if this was a plant that I was treating um, is I'd probably spray one day and then come back within three or four days, uh, once the initial uh, aphids have been killed, I'd spray again and kill the rest of them. So uh, sort of a, a much slower working um, chemical or product. Now, as for the pyrethrum, this stuff is freaking lethal because I checked this after an hour and a half, there was no longer anything moving alive in this uh, jar. Since then, everything has dropped off. All the aphids have dropped off. Uh, the flower spikes and all of them are dead. This has literally killed every single aphid that was in this jar. And it happened in about an hour and a half. This stuff is lethal. So goodness knows what effect it's going to have on, um, on the actual plants. If you remember, we treated those three drossa. We, we treated three drossa capensis alba. We, the two big ones were treated with neem and with pyrethrum, uh, irrespective of each other. And then we, the last one we treated with a, a mixture of two, a mixture of both neem and of um, pyrethrum. I'm going to wash my hands very thoroughly after I finish touching this. I don't expect it to hurt me or in any way, shape or form. So this is uh, one of the flower spikes and I can see two aphids on here. They, they appear very white. They might actually be just castings, like when they shed their skin. They're certainly not moving, so there's no life coming from that. Those aphids, which I can see there, they would appear to be dead. And I think these are castings as well, so it's just some dead skin, basically. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of water into this jam jar. Just to free them up like that. And then we'll pour them out. I'll pour them out on this lid, and we can have a little look. This stuff is pretty damn there's still a few sort of in the bottom of the jar which i'm not going to be able to get out but i think you're going to get the idea okay so center of shot you can see the larger aphids which uh which were dead at the bottom of the jam jar i've just washed out and placed them on the lid of the jam jar and there's also some small aphid um, nymphs as well everything else which is on the fly or on the flower spikes is completely dead so that, that pyrethrum killed everything in an hour and a half, very quickly, obviously very, very efficient uh, at eradicating aphids. Okay, so to conclude, what are my findings at this stage? So it's only been 24 hours. The pyrethrum, instantaneous knockout. Every single thing that got hit with that, with that spray died within an hour and a half. So I would say that that is, that's like napalm. That stuff's seriously, seriously effective. As for its effects on the plants, so the live plants that we repot and we treated, only time will tell. I think 24 hours is going to be too soon to uh, have a good assessment of the effects of that on Drosera. I chose Drosera not only because basically they were the plants that I had which were the worst affected, um, but they're also the plants in which it's easiest to see the deformation of the leaves and to spot the actual aphids on the plant. But the main reason as well is the fact that they, they basically have no um, cuticle on them at all. They're very vascular plants, so it's very easy for aphids to attack them and to feed on them. Um, so 
with that in mind, if the, py the pyrethrum is particularly aggressive, I would expect it to have a detrimental effect on those plants much sooner than I would expect to see them on an orchid or some of the other carnivorous plants which are just that much tougher. So things like Darlingtonia, uh, stuff like that. I would also expect butterworts to be hurt very much by, or very quickly by, because of course the surface of the leaf is where they excrete their enzymes and absorb nutrients, mainly nitrogen, from the insects that they catch. Um, the neem. The neem seems to have worked uh, very quickly on those uh, aphids in which it made initial contact with. So as soon as we sprayed it, the aphids which were coated seemed to have died out in, I would say, an, a, a sort of... I looked within an hour and a half and there was still some stumbling around. In the morning, uh, I noticed that the ones that had definitely been blasted off the stalks and were coated in the neem had died in that eight hour period. That aside though, since looking uh, in the jam jar, I have found some aphids which are still alive. Some of them certainly aren't feeding, the bigger ones are sort of wandering around, a bit dopey, uh, and don't really know what's going on. The nymphs which are still attached to the stems are still feeding, or they appear to be feeding. I haven't got anything that I can look at them that close up, but they're present. So I'm going to work on the assumption that they are feeding. Uh, so what would I do with that? I'm going to keep that jar as a running uh, as an ongoing experiment, we'll do another update on that yet. I'm going to leave it a whole another two days before we go back and have a look at that, see what's going on in there. What do I expect to see? I expect to see uh, the ones which have been treated, the larger ones which were treated and coated, uh, to have either lost weight, lost weight? I don't expect them to have lost weight. I expect them to be looking iller, to have slowed down a lot more, if not died. Uh, the smaller ones, I expect them to be growing because they're still feeding. So I would expect to have to treat that again before the efficacy of the neem has a significant impact on those smaller aphids which don't appear to have been uh, negatively affected by the um, application of the product. So uh, yeah, interesting. Like I say, pyrethrum, only time will tell. We'll have a look at the drosser and see how they get on uh, later on in the week. But um, I am expecting some degree of damage as a result of that pyrethrum. If it's that aggressive towards aphids, I can only begin to imagine what it's going to do to uh, the carnivorous plants. I would expect to see some sort of damage. So uh, please stay tuned. Remember, if you like uh, the content I make, uh, don't forget to leave us a thumbs up down below. Please subscribe if you want more. I've always got little bits of video, uh, interesting subjects as and when I find something interesting to upload or to prattle on about for 20 minutes. So uh, yeah, subscribe. Hit the little bell button down below so you get notified when I've uh, up, uh, uploaded a, um, a video. And also, if you feel like supporting the greenhouse and the content that I make, head over to my Patreon channel, which is www.patreon.com forward slash Oliver's Greenhouse, and uh, support this, uh, this project as it goes. Make my life easier for me. Thanks very much once again for watching, and uh, I'll see you all again soon. Thanks very much. Hello, welcome back to Oliver's Greenhouse. I've just got to turn the fan off. Yeah, believe it or not, and the what? What are you doing? Why are you like this? Okay, to conclude, so to wrap that up. Okay, so to. Okay.